So in our last video we were on the left side of the engine. Now we're going to switch to the right side of the engine. We're going to start working on removing some of our uh, heating and ventilation controls. So here we're going to remove the uh, blower, the fan motor and blower. Uh, to do that I think there's four or five screws that have to be removed and uh, you can tell that uh, you can kind of see the as we remove it here the ground is kind of that pigtail that you see hanging off the top you mount and that grounds to the front of the cab um, you can also once this moves out of the way here you can kind of see at the bottom there's a single connector that's the power for the for the blower so um, I've already gone ahead and labeled most of the original factory harness um, you can tell that one of the other connectors there is for the uh, AC switch that mounts up in the uh, EVAP housing itself. So I uh, basically plan to kind of lay that out and I don't know if I want to purchase a factory replacement harness and then add like the power windows because it's a Scottsdale model so there's power windows that I need to add to that to keep that in. It doesn't look like there's factory harnesses uh, aftermarket harnesses that do the power window so um, not sure I'm going to do that or just do like a generic kind of 22 circuit type harness and then do it kind of terminate myself but anyway getting back to what we're doing here now we're next we're going to get into the evap the evaporator housing itself so there's I don't know there's about six screws here between the top and the bottom that we need to remove. Um, I noticed that there was a couple, well, at least one that was missing and uh, I don't know, the, the design on this, I don't know, housing or whatever you want to call it, is a little strange because it's like the blower motor side of this housing was thick, like the plastic was much thicker, probably like, you know, eighth inch thick, and considerably. Uh, thicker than what was wrapping around the evaporator itself that seemed pretty flimsy so as you can tell the part around the evaporator is really it's uh, very soft the plastic is just kind of deteriorated to the point where it's not re reusable just try to carefully uh, remove it here without breaking any of the wires and see once and as, as I'm removing I can just tell that it's not going to be usable I don't know if I'm going to be able to source uh, another one or just buy one at the one at the junkyard so So there it is, it's off the truck, and you can kind of tell that we've had some friends uh, who have visited in the past, so um, we'll be getting rid of their home. And Okay, so we got the evaporator, I don't know, kind of like the fan and the outer evaporator cover off, so something like that. Anyway, so we've got the kind of plastic fan housing here, which is a lot more sturdier than that one. So, looks like we got one, two, three, four, five bolts there, and then one, sorry, one and two, so these two guys to take that out of there, so why don't we get started on that.
So now that we got the bolts removed, uh, we will go ahead and take out the canister and evaporator. Uh, the switch on top, I believe, is the pressure switch that for the the system, the AC system, and then there's another little hole there that you see. That's for the blower motor resistor. Um, so those two items will be replaced. Uh, the housing itself, the plastic housing, I think is reusable, and uh, I don't think the mice chewed it up too bad. But we'll we'll get rid of their little house and. We'll have to relocate somewhere else. I think it's a general rule that I've read. Uh, it's not good to reuse some of these old AC components. I mean, one of those is a pressure vessel, so probably not the best idea to reuse that when it's that old. But um, And the parts aren't too expensive. So I got the... Uh, evaporator housing and evaporator itself off the way this works is that you know the fan here fan here spins blows air across and then looks like so the cold kind of tell you got the hot side here you got the cold side over there so if you're you know it's a winter time and you need some heat, then your heater core is behind here, and you can kind of tell from the back that it's kind of right in there. And I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, so the heat blows, or the fan blows across, and then this flapper guy here inside, which uh, I'll have to <clears throat> doesn't want to move, but yeah, if you the heat, it'll blow it over the heater core, and of course you get heat in your cab, and then if you blow it uh, the other way then it comes inside here I probably can't see that worth a dang uh, you can see it kind of comes in here and then it blows across that, evap that evaporator so anyway that's uh, kind of how that is working so I don't know it came out pretty easy um, looks like I got some I don't know gasket material here or something to clean off but uh yeah so the harness wasn't too bad got the got the harness all labeled across here a couple grounds uh, i think there was a evaporator switch power for the power for the fan itself so not too bad so